All right, on to the muscles here. Uh, you need to remember that muscles can only do one thing. They can only pull. They contract. They can't push. Muscles don't push. They worked with the bones and the bones acting as levers, but muscles can only contract. So in this contraction is referred to as a twitch, a muscle twitch. So when a muscle twitches, and this is what triggers it to contract and such right here, there are four parts to this. Now, the latent period. So a muscle for a muscle to twitch, you have to generate a thought. You have to tell it to do this. So you think about moving the muscle. You send the signal via the brain all the way down the spinal cord through the motor neuron out to the muscle and it hits. It takes about five milliseconds. That's the latent period. Then the muscle actually contracts. So when the action potential hits, AP stands for action potential, when it hits, then the muscle actually does its work. That takes about 40 milliseconds. Then it stops. This is this relaxation period. And the muscle is allowed or can elongate only if it's pulled back by an antagonistic muscle. But it's allowed to return and such in this 50 milliseconds. And then there is a period of time that it cannot fire again. It can't do it again. That's the refractory period. So those four parts together make up the twitch right there. And it's, uh, we're going to look at here in a minute. We have two types of muscle fibers, those that have a fast twitch and those that have a slow twitch. If you do the math here, what's that? 50 plus 40 plus 5 plus 2, 97, 97 milliseconds. Okay, so uh, you can get it to uh, a, a complete muscle fiber with multiple motors and such in there. You can get it to uh, come back again. And such That's this summation. Uh, you can get a long sustained contraction. But that requires a huge input of ATP. That's called tetany. You can continually use a muscle over and over and over and over until uh, it loses its strength or its power. And that's due to a buildup of organic waste. And that's the lactate. That's lactic acid. That causes the pH to go down, which then triggers a pain response and the muscle stops. Uh, involuntary movements, those are your shivers and such. This is your body's way of firing off muscles, uh, burning ATP, and uh, uh, releasing the waste heat. And then that kind of helps warm the body back up. So when you look at a muscle, we're going to see here fast twitch, slow twitch. When you look at a muscle, the actual part doing the contracting are the myosins. These are the protein motors and such. Now, they grab hold of the thinner actin, and they pull the actin toward the middle. They can only do this by changing their conformation, changing their shape. And they are able to do that with uh, the addition of ATP. ATP is an energy molecule. It's an adenine with the ribose sugar and then three phosphates attached. And it's that third phosphate is what they call as a high energy bond. Okay. The head of the myosin is able to break off that third phosphate. So really the head of the myosin is similar to or acting like an enzyme. So, uh, but when that ATP adenosine triphosphate breaks down to ADP adenosine diphosphate plus an inorganic phosphate that causes the myosin to change its shape and when it changes its shape or when it swivels that's the mechanical force so when you're looking at muscles any muscle in the body any any skeletal muscle in the body as such it's composed of these myosin motors and there's two types of these there's more but we're just going to deal with two types and such uh, now they are different 
isoforms. They're different. They're built differently. If you think of it like that, there is a type one, which is known as a slow twitch and a type two, which is known as a fast twitch. If you look there, the type twos are even broken down type two, a two X, uh, different authors have different versions or different ideas on the type two. So we're just going to stick to two a and two X. So, uh, in, in looking at this, think of the 2A as a modern type 2 and the 2X as an ancient or an older type 2. So Now, these myosin types and every muscle in your body is composed of both type 1 and type 2. Uh, so genetically, your muscles are built this way. But you're gonna, I hope I can get it across to you that your actions, what you do, how you treat your muscles, you can get these different isoforms to be expressed. And so, so you can trigger the DNA to express certain types. You know, so, uh, but we, we base them by how quickly they can, can uh, produce that twitch. Remember just a few seconds ago, it was 97 milliseconds. So that's kind of the baseline. So. So when we, we look at this, so type one is a slow twitch, uh, and type two is a fast twitch. So type one, where do you find them? They're in the tonic muscles, muscles that you use continuously, like in the legs, because you're always walking around using your legs and such. Type two are the tetanic muscles. You don't use them that often. You you can, but you don't use them that often, like the pectoral muscles. Now I'm using humans as an example, but a chicken is a much better example because you got light meat and dark meat, and you most of us know chicken, and we can think of it that way. So the contraction times for the slow twitch is about 100. To 110 milliseconds. Remember, earlier we counted 97. The fast twitch is about 50, 50 milliseconds. So there's the difference, right there, and how quickly they, from the from the uh, generation of the action potential to the contraction of the muscle itself, 50 milliseconds compared to 100 milliseconds. Both of them extremely fast, but one's just two times faster than the other. So. Why do they have this uh, color appearance, this light and this dark? Because of the protein myoglobin. Myoglobin is similar to hemoglobin in that it holds oxygen. So having the myoglobin allows the muscle to hold oxygen, which allows it to make more ATP without becoming uh, devoid of it or strained or going anoxic and such. Whereas the white muscle, the type 2, does not have the myoglobin. So a type 1 is a continuous use. The chicken running around the yard all the time. The type 2 is for brief use. The chicken flying up to its roost. So the type 1 is for endurance. Endurance, endurance, endurance. Type 2, power and speed. Now, some books and such would go right here and talk about a, a long distance marathon runner compared to a uh, 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 sprinter, like a 100 meter dash. So, <clears throat> yes, think of it that way. But you have to remember every muscle is a comp is, is a, has both, is composed of both. There's a percentage of both in every muscle and such. So when you look at a marathoner's muscles, if you looked at their uh, their leg muscles and such, the the muscles making up, let's say, the uh, rectus femoris, would be about 80% type one and 20% type two. Where if on a sprinter you looked at that, it'd be about 20% type one and 80% uh, type two. So we, these percentages are going to come back here in a minute. 
So a type one is best in long, slow, sustained contractions, running, continuous use, continuous use. Type two, rapid, short burst, fast contractions. So the chicken running across the farmyard, you know, for 30, 40, 50, 80 minutes, you know, just running around versus them just jumping and flying up to the roost. Okay. Type one, type two, a 26 mile marathon running that for two and a half hours of continuous use versus running a hundred meter dash in 10 seconds. So long, slow, sustain, rapid. Type ones, they don't fatigue. Type two, they easily fatigue. Fatigue is the accumulation of the organic acids, the buildup of the lactic acids, the altering or the changing of the cytoplasm's pH. That's the fatigue. Type ones get around this because they have more blood vessels, more capillaries going into that, carrying more blood, carrying more oxygen, plus they have the myoglobin to hold on to more oxygen. The type two, less. They don't have the uh, blood vessel network running through them as much as the type one. Type one muscles are smaller in size, type two or larger. Think about the uh, long distance runners and the body morphology of the shape. Think about the sprinters and you can see that and such. The glycogen, remember that's how your body stores excess glucose. You store it as glycogen in the liver and in your skeletal muscles. The glycogen is stored energy. Well, in a type two, you break down the glycogen very quickly for the energy. The type one, you don't use the glycogen, you're using the glucose brought in through the blood supply and such. And also, breaking down and using the glycogen is an anaerobic pathway, a pathway that does it without oxygen. So the type ones don't have that ability as well as the type two. So, so this type two will take that glyc glycogen, convert it to lactate, releasing ATP very quickly without having to have oxygen present. And by doing that, as the lactate, the glycogen gets converted, the lactate accumulates, builds up, changes the pH, muscle hurts. So the type ones are predominantly aerobic. Type 2s have that and such, but it's mostly the uh, anaerobic. Type 1s have a higher fat content. Type 2 have a lower fat content. So go back to your chicken. Which chicken do you like? Do you like the legs and the thighs or do you like the breast? The legs and thighs are greasy, juicy. The, the breasts are kind of dry. That's due to the fat content. So type 1, more mitochondria. Type 2, fewer mitochondria. You don't need the mitochondria if you're going from glycogen straight to lactate. But if you're going to go from the fat down to the acetyls to the uh, NAD, NADH, NAD, and then to the electron transport chain producing more ATP in the mitochondria, then you have to have uh, the mitochondria to do that. So more oxygen. When oxygen's available, you make ATP through the mitochondria. When you're looking at the SR, the sarcoplasm reticulum, the type 1s, it's not well developed. Type 2 is very well developed because you get an action potential and you get all of this calcium released at once. High concentration to low concentration. Boom. Fast twitch. Slow twitch, eh, it's not very well developed and kind of oozes out at a little bit slower rate. Such so. All right, we're going to stop right there. We'll pick it up on the other side.